Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergargar.com. In this video, we're going to look at how to calculate the time elapsed between two date and times, and we're going to present that result in days, hours, and minutes. Now, you may already know that when you enter dates and times in Excel, they are stored as a number, that's the date, and then the time is the decimal. So if I click on cell B2 for a moment, where I've got the 5th of January 2017 at 10 past 10 in the morning, and look to present that in numeric form, I can see that Excel is going to show that as 42,740.42, which obviously doesn't mean too much for us, the 0 0.42 being that part of the day that 10 past 10 represents. Now what that means when we're calculating the date and time difference is that if I just want to do a simple formula to subtract that start date from that end date, I'm going to get a result that's quite confusing to me, like that on screen. Where it's showing it's coming in really just under three days there. Now that's not very helpful to me, so we're going to have to be a little bit clever with our Excel formula. So let's start off the formula that I'm going to use. And the first function that's going to be of help to me here is a function called int. And you can see its explanation here. It rounds the number down to the nearest integer. And what I'm going to use that for is if I subtract the start date from the end date with that function, then the result that comes back will just be the integer value, which is the two days. So now that time is not bothering my result, it's out of the way. Now I'm not finished yet, because we want to know how many hours and minutes as well, but we can see how that function alone has extracted the days portion of our ultimate answer. So on the end of that int calculation, I'm going to do some concatenating. I have the ampersand to join other text in. And by the way, you can display this result however you wish, whatever is going to suit yourself. But for me, I'm just going to write days in this little space in there, this string that I'm creating. Then I'm going to put another ampersand to join the next bit of the result on top. And this next bit of the result is going to be the calculation of the number of hours. Now to do that, I'm going to use the function called hour, which returns the hour as a number from, you know, basically the, the number stored in a cell. Now, with this hour function, I now need to extract the decimal portion of the date time value stored in columns B and in columns A there. So I'm going to use a function called mod for that one, which returns the remainder after a number is divided by a divisor. Now I just want the remainder from that value. So I'm going to put this mod function in. The number is going to be whatever the difference is between the start date and the end date, and the divisor will be 1 because I'm not really too interested in dividing, I just want the remainder from that calculation. So that won't change the result by dividing it by one, and I can just go and extract that remainder, and then the hour function will extract the hour value from that. So like we saw uh, a little while ago, uh, when I, a few minutes ago, when I put that on screen with just B2 take away A2, the value was 2.993, something like that the hour function will get what would make sense to us. <laughs> that would extract it for you from Excel's gobbledygook. I'm then going to do a bit of concatenating again. I'm just going to stick this in here. Uh, that is hours. Putting some spaces in for clarity. Ampersand on the end of that. And on the end of this, we're going to have the function for a minute. So we're basically going to do the exact same thing again. But this time I've got a minute function to extract the minute. So I'm just writing in that mod function, b2 take away a2, a comma divided by 1, that's the divisor. 
bracket for the mod function, bracket for the minute function. I'm just running out of room a little bit here, aren't I? But I'm just going to concatenate on the end of that the word minutes. And if I run this function, we get, I'll copy that down, we get these results. So that first one, two days, 23 hours and 50 minutes, makes a lot more sense than that 2.993 uh, malarkey that I had a moment ago. If you're quite like fairly new or not too confident with formulas, then you know the, the sheer size of this formula might seem a little bit daunting, but hopefully it didn't seem too bad when I was building it up. A lot of it are these concatenated bits, uh, me joining some elements of text to make it nice and readable in there. That's what the majority of it is. And in these two portions, extracting the hour from the mod calculation and the mid are basically the same thing, just one's extracting hour, one's extracting minute. Mod is used to get the remainder from what I demonstrated at the start of the video. The decimal portion in gets the what we know as days, but the integer portion uh, of that value. Uh, just bear in mind we can display this value however we wish. So just a, a quick demonstration. Uh, I could change that to just a simple kind of colon and maybe get rid of this rubbish at the end if I'm not interested in, you know, and so many minutes. And I can get the same result displayed like that. You know, which, which you may prefer. It's not quite as long-winded. You know, so I've got two days, seven days. But then people may read that as, you know, 24 hours, 50, 3 hours, 25. So you can kind of play around with those string portions of the formula to get the value to display however you wish. The important part is that we can use the int function and the mod function to get the result. That's the important part. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please check out some of our other tutorials on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergargar.com.